I'm sorry for delaying your lunch today. <laughs> Most Reverend Donestong Choco, Bishop of Cubao. Most Reverend Gabriele Cacha, our Apostolic Nuncio. Our dancing Apostolic Nuncio because he became viral dancing the tinikling in one occasion. We saw on Facebook. Father Primitivo Viray, our Provincial Superior, Father Jose Kilong Kilong, our outgoing President, Father Rohel Abais, our Vice President for Academic Affairs, Father Antonio Moreno, the President of the Jesuit Conference of Asia Pacific, Father Silvino Bores, Rector of Loyola House of Studies, my Superior, Members of the LSD Board of Trustees, led by our Chair, Mr. Roberto Lavinia, and Archbishop Ambo David of the Diocese of Caloocan, Bishop Ones uh, Anchoca, I already mentioned, um, LSD administration, faculty, staff, students, everyone. Good afternoon, po, sa inyong lahat. <laughs> This address will have three parts. Um, first, just to introduce to you LST through the, through the lens of our alumni. Second, the mission of LST. And third, the missionary renew, renewal of theological studies after Veritatis Gaudium. So let's start. LST through the lens of our alumni. Over a month ago, I wrote to some LSD alumni requesting them for some information about their current ministry and a few thoughts also about their experiences at LSD when they were here. I thought of introducing, introducing some of them to you today. Through our alumni, perhaps we hope to come to a lived appreciation of our mission today at LSD, even as we also try to reflect on LST's future directions. So some uh, an alumnus from Africa and then from Europe. Father Martin Waweru Kamau. He finished his licentiate degree in 2017 from Kenya. Father Martin is the headmaster of the Loyola Secondary School in Wau, South Sudan. A school in the frontier, LSS, forms students Many, who, many of whom are displaced together with, with their relatives and they live in camps where they took refuge after the civil wars. Father Martin, who studied migration theology with us, wrote, LSD empowered me to develop resilience and pliability to work with, with the displaced and forcibly uprooted people who in many cases remain in a state of despair. Mr. Christian Schenker, a layman, he finished his master's in 2017 from Switzerland. Christian works at the student chaplaincy under the supervision of the Jesuits at the University of Zurich. He wrote, LST prepared me well for this ministry by letting me imbibe both the aura of Jesuit intellectuality as well as Ignatian spirituality. Some of the challenges I face in my work are obviously greatly influenced by my particular context here today in Switzerland. Secularization, individualism, relativism of truth, challenges that make us rethink what it means to be church and what it means to belong to the church. An alumnus from Latin America, Father Walter Diaz of the Scalabrinian Fathers. He finished his STB in 2014. He is from Mexico. After LST studies and ordination, Walter was sent to the Scalabrinian-run Holy Redeemer Parish in London. In particular, he was blessed to share with the Filipino community in London his own experience as a migrant in the Philippines during his theological studies here at LST. With great honor and gratitude, Father Walter writes, I gave his people back a small portion 
of the human and academic formation that I have gained in the Philippines, I am very thankful to my former classmates, professors, and to all the beautiful people of LSD. Our alumni from Asia and the Philippines. Father Francis Xavier Nguyen Hai Tin, a Jesuit from Vietnam. He finished his STB in 2013. <coughs> Tin is the formation delegate of the Vietnamese province, and he teaches theology full-time at the St. Joseph Jesuit Scholasticate in Ho Chi Minh City. Tin wrote, At LST, my mind was widely open to new knowledge and experiences that challenged and renewed me, making me into what I am now. Much of what I am teaching and the way I am, I am thinking is from what I learned and experienced during my time at LST and at Arupe International Residence. Our lay alumnus from Singapore, Gerald Kong Tekwi, he finished the licentiate and masters in 2012. <coughs> Gerard is the executive secretary of both the Archdiocesan Catholic Council for Interreligious Dialogue and the Archdiocesan Catholic Council for Ecumenical Dialogue in the Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Singapore. He strives to build bonds of friendship, understanding and respect among believers of different religions that bring Catholics and the interfaith community together. From India, Sister Antonetta Pereira of the Franciscan Missionaries of Mary, she finished the licentiate in 2015. Some of you are smiling, you recognize uh, our alumni. Sister Antonetta is a professor of theology at the Women's Theologate in India. She is the tertian instructor, instructor and is in charge of the junior sisters in her congregation. From Korea, I'm sure you will recognize sister, Sister Lee J. Wee, S-O-L-P-H. She finished the STB just in 2016. Sister Teresa is the editor-in-chief in a publishing company in Korea called Living with Scripture, run by their congregation, the Sisters of Our Lady of Perpetual Help. She lectures also in theology and scripture to lay people and sisters in formation, frequently using her LSD class notes. My Silbi pala, those class notes. <laughs> have used. She's using her LSD class notes in Revelation and Faith, Christology, Ecclesiology, and others. She wrote, Everything I experienced in LSD is a priceless treasure. The knowledge, experience, and friendships with classmates from many countries. From Indonesia, <coughs> Father Ferry Susanto, he finished the doctorate in 2017. Father Ferry is the head of the Biblical Commission in the Archdiocese of Jakarta and is formator in the major seminary of the Archdiocese. He teaches scripture courses with focus on the Old Testament at the Driyarkara School of Philosophy in Jakarta. Father Ferry wrote, LSD gave me wonderful experiences in studying the sacred scriptures using some contextual approaches, including the point of view of the Asian church. In my teaching, I share with my students some biblical approaches that I learned in LSD, such as feminism and post-colonial criticism. Thanks to all my professors who helped me in my doctorate program. Among... <laughs> Among our many graduates from the Philippines are recently appointed bishops, as mentioned by the Nuncio. Five have been appointed by Pope Francis just this year, 2019, to serve the people of God in the Philippines. They are Most Reverend Cosme Damian Almedilia. He finished the seminary program in 1987 as bishop now of Butuan. Most Reverend Midifil Billiones. STB 1994, seminary program 1995, 
as Auxiliary Bishop of Cebu, Most Reverend Marvin Maceda, STB 1995 and Seminary Program in 1996, my classmate here at LST, Bishop of San Jose de Antique, Most Reverend Leo M. Dalmau of the Claritian Missionaries, he finished in 96 and 97 and is Bishop of the Prelature of Isabella in Basilan. And Most Reverend Jose Rapadas, the third STL in 2007 as Bishop of Iligan. We do have so many other wonderful lay alumni, like our amazing theology professors here in the university. Some of them are here. Family counselors, retreat directors, and just seeing how much service our alumni provide to the various churches around the world brings a lot of consolation and pride to my heart and to the heart of our faculty. We at LST, after all, we are doing something worthwhile. We are carrying out an important mission in this part of the world. The mission of LST. The mission of LST is threefold. As an ecclesiastical faculty of theology, as Asian and international, and as Jesuit. First, as an ecclesiastical faculty of theology, we are under the direct supervision of the Holy See. And LSD serves the particular churches of the Philippines, in Asia, and even beyond in the preaching of the gospel. Connected with, but definitely not the same as catechesis or religious education, which is an initiatory and a continuing way of formation in the basic tenets of the faith, theology helps believers to understand even more fully what they believe, to assimilate the intelligible content of the Word of God so that it might become light and nourishment for their faith. This is the way of the understanding of faith, the intellectus fidei. Indeed, theology is faith-seeking understanding, fides querens intellectum, but also faith-seeking deeper and creative understanding. Hence, the mission of LST and our faculty is not so much to catechize our students, no? That is important, but that is not LST. But to theologize. To theologize with our students in a way that is profound, creative, beautiful, attractive, inspiring, and even disturbing. Together, professors and students seek to understand better, further develop, and more effectively communicate the meaning of Christian revelation. They investigate the ways in which theology can shed light on the specific questions raised by contemporary culture, many of which are so complex, so difficult, at times disconcerting. At LST and in any ecclesiastical faculty of theology, these questions deserve carefully nuanced answers and not memorized lines from the text of the catechism, not even carefully memorized paragraphs from the class notes of your professors. As an ecclesiastical faculty, LSD commits itself to this mission of theologizing in communion always and intensely with the hierarchy and with the local, particular, and universal church in the whole work of evangelization. In fact, the fathers of the 35th General Congregation of the Society of Jesus, held in 2008, in its Decree 1, quotes Pope Benedict XVI when he said in his allocution that the church's evangelizing work relies heavily 
on the society's responsibility for the formation, for formation in the fields of theology, spirituality, and mission. In an era of complex social, cultural, and religious challenges, the decree states, the Pope asks us to faithfully help the Church. What the Church expects from us is sincere collaboration in the search for the full truth to which the Spirit leads us in full adherence to the faith and the teaching of the Church. Indeed, as an ecclesiastical faculty of theology and ministry, LST was originally established primarily for the formation of future priests. Nevertheless, through these past 50 years, LST has intensely committed itself as well to the professional and ministerial formation of the laity and religious sisters who are companions of the clergy in mission. Out of our current student population of 463, we currently have 56 laymen, 53 laywomen, and 39 religious sisters in various degree and non-degree programs. In fact, as expressed by one of our professors, Father Arnel Aquino, our day-to-day -day classes at LST have become all the richer because of what lay people and women religious bring. Feet on the earth, deeply pastoral and refreshing narratives and experiences, more appropriated to the real-time needs of today's people, closer to the sheep. Pope Francis, in fact, tells us that theological centers should encourage as much as possible, in addition to seminarians and religious, the participation of lay people and women, both lay and religious. In particular, the contribution that women are making and can make to theology is indispensable, according to Pope Francis and their participation should therefore be supported. In this regard, we are launching today our fundraising project, the LSD Scholarship Fund for the Laity and Religious Sisters, that will help our prospective students in the master's and degree and doctoral programs to respond to the inspiration and challenge of Pope Francis. With the generous assistance of those who support our cause, LSD hopes to bring in 20 million pesos as capital for this scholarship fund. Let us pray for the success of this campaign. As an Asian and ecclesiastical faculty of theology, first of all, let me state that LSD is and will always be Filip a Filipino school of theology. The Philippines serves as the immediate context or the precise, formative, educative backdrop of theological and ministerial formation in LSD. Our rich and complex Filipino cultural heritage that many observe is altogether Asian and Western. Those varied expressions of lived faith and popular religiosity by Filipinos. The complex, Social, political, and economic landscape during this time of Duterte and its lights and shadows, shadows and lights. Baha, Bagyo, Habagat, Traffic, Chicken Joy, Jollibee. You're in the Philippines. However, LSD is and has always been international as well because of the global character of Jesuit mission. From its very beginning, Jesuit mission has cons considered the entire world as the object of our interest and concern. One of the early Jesuits, in fact, Jerome Nadal, used to say, for the society of Jesus, the whole world 
is our home. <coughs> Here in LSD in 2009, through the efforts of our former president, Father Jose Mario Francisco, who is here with us, we have institutionalized a program called the Asian Theological Program. Its goal is to ensure that preparation for ministry in Asian contexts, including the Philippines, remains an integral part of LST. This formation requires enabling our students to understand and communicate the gospel within their context, to reflect critically on these contexts in the light of the gospel, and to enrich the Catholic tradition with concerns arising from these contexts. For majority of our students who are from the Philippines, mga Pinoy na Pinoy, this Asian and global perspective in theologizing can serve as a powerful experience of church, both as particular and as universal, as they reflect on the gospel of Jesus locally, in the context of their bar barangay, in the context of their parish or city or the entire country, but always, always with an Asian and global perspective, never narrow, never parochial. <coughs> Excuse me. Just to share some statistics with you. From 65 international students, out of 350 students in the academic year 2008-2009, that's 18% of the population of the school, the number of international students has swelled to 187 out of 463 students this current semester. That's 40.39%. As LSD has been experiencing not just growth in enrollment in general, but more significantly, the increasing internationalization of our academic community over the last nine or 10 years, LSD thereby responded by updating its curriculum, course offerings, and pedagogy in accord with our Asian Theological Program. <coughs> Since most of our graduates, when back in their field of mission, will be working with and ministering to peoples of Asia and its various cultural and religious traditions, we also strive to prepare them for mission in such a context in various ways, among which by offering courses that have, a, that have an explicit Asian content like Asian church history and Asian religions, courses that discuss issues which are common to Asian contexts like migration and care for a common home, courses like contextual theology and liturgical enculturation that highlight the importance of contexts in the understanding of Christian doctrine and practice. Two years ago, LSD has taken a further step in our commitment to our international students and to con contextualize theologizing by instituting what we call Theology in an Asian Language series. We have offered theology and psycho-spirituality courses in Vietnamese, in Bahasa, Indonesia, in Korean languages. Currently, one of our professors uh, from the Saviorian Missionaries, Father Luigino Marchioron, is teaching a course uh, in Mandarin, reading the scriptures from the Chinese perspective. And next semester, not one, but three professors from Vietnam will come over to offer a, to offer a course, the psych psycho-spiritual growth in religious formation in Vietnamese language. Pending student interest, we will offer future similar native language courses, including Filipino and English-based courses that address the questions that are being asked by our international students from Africa and Latin America. LST's Asian Theological Program is a work in progress. It would be a great step forward if our international students can participate more 
in organizing our theological hour and to bring life and faith issues arising from their own cultures so that with the help of, ex of experts from their respective countries, we can reflect together on these concerns. As a Jesuit faculty of theology, as one of the key ministries of the Society of Jesus in the Philippines, it is incumbent upon LST to take active part in the reflection of the Society of Jesus on our universal apostolic preferences from 2019 to 2029. The UAP are the fruit of a process of discernment led by Father General Arturo Sosa that serve as a roadmap of the Society of Jesus in our mission. So there are four, just to let you know about these. First, to show the way to God through the spiritual exercises and discernment to share our spirituality with others. Number two, to walk with the poor, the outcasts of the world, those whose dignity has been violated in a mission of reconciliation and justice. And number three, to accompany the young, young people in the creation of a hope-filled future. And lastly, to collaborate in the care of our common home. The process of assimilation and implementation of the UAP, which Father General enjoins all Jesuits, also pertains to us all here at LST, faculty, students, and staff, who are, in the words of Father General, our partners in mission, who also share in our mission and hopes. The last part of my sharing with you pertains to the vision of Pope Francis regarding the missionary renewal of theological studies, as he wrote in Veritatis Gaudium. Pope Francis issued in 2018 the Apostolic Constitution Veritatis Gaudium on ecclesiastical universities and faculties. The path that he laid out in Veritatis Gaudium is the path that LSD is called to take if we are to be always and intensely in close communion with the Holy Father, the hierarchy, and with the local and universal church. Pope Francis points out three fundamental criteria or requirements for the renewal of ecclesiastical studies in the service of a missionary church. First contem is contemplation on the very heart of the kerygma, or the core gospel proclamation of salvation in Christ, and to discern how it continues to take flesh in the life of the church and of humanity. Pope Francis wrote that renewal begins with the theologian's encounter with the mercy of God, grounded on the initial proclamation made by Jesus himself. And from there, Pope Francis encourages us to study how the various disciplines, dogma, morality, spirituality, canon law, may reflect the centrality of mercy in the gospel. Without mercy, our theology, our law, our pastoral care, run the risk of collapsing into bureaucratic narrow-mindedness or ideology, which by their nature seek to domesticate the mystery. Indeed, for Pope Francis, compassion, especially for the, those who are suffering, is an indispensable component of authentic theologizing. Without compassion, Pope Francis wrote, constantly nourished by prayer, theology not only loses its soul, but also its intelligence and its ability to interpret reality in a Christian way. Moreover, theologians who prudently place themselves outside the world 
and share nothing risky with the majority of humanity are merely engaging themselves in a laboratory theology, a pure theology like distilled water which understands nothing. When theologians grapple with, especially with difficult non-black or white questions facing humanity today in the light of the gospel, Pope Francis acknowledges the need for them to enjoy theological freedom. Because without the possibility of experimenting with new paths, nothing new is created and there is no room anymore for the newness of the spirit of the risen one. At the same time, Pope Francis clarifies that true freedom in teaching and research is necessarily based upon the firm adherence to God's word and deference to the magisterium. Such fidelity to church teachings is guided by the hierarchy of truths within the Catholic Church and the various degrees of authority with which these truths are taught by the magisterium. Nevertheless, Pope Francis says that in their exercise of creative fidelity in harmonizing theology with the pastoral needs of the people of God, theologians should proceed with trust, with trust and without suspicion, but at the same time with prudence and without rashness, especially in their teaching. A culture of dialogue. The second fundamental criterion in the renewal of theological studies is the cultivation of, authentic, of an authentic culture of dialogue with believers and non-believers. Dialogue for Pope Francis is not a tactical approach. It's not tactics, but it is a method of discernment. We are able to discern by dialogue when we are able to experience the God of mercy in the context of communion and we are able to appreciate more fully the meaning of such an encounter and its practical implications. Through dialogue, theologians are able to discern new ways of relating to God, to others, and to the world around us. And they reach places where new narratives and paradigms are being formed. And lastly, interdisciplinarity, cross-disciplinarity, and networking. The third impetus, according to Pope Francis, to the renewal of theology is precisely that, carried out with wisdom and creativity in the light of revelation and assisted by networking. Still, this criterion pertains to dialogue. A theology that dialogues and adopts discernment requires theologians who are rooted in the very heart of the church and at the same time open to the inexhaustible novelties of the Spirit that can be present in various sources and various ways of understanding and transmitting the truth. Pope Francis thus encourages interdisciplinarity either in what he calls the weak form as a simple multidisciplinary approach wherein an object is studied from the viewpoint of different disciplines or in its strong form as cross-disciplinarity, viewing all disciplines from the perspective or against the backdrop of the gospel. Networking and cooperation, not just among ecclesiast ecclesiastical faculties and schools of theology is needed, but also cooperation with, uh, with other secular, academic, and non-academic institutions which will serve the push towards inter- and cross-disciplinarity in our ecclesiastical faculties. In summary, in summary, theology after Veritatis Gaudium for Pope Francis is a charismatic, mission-oriented theology 
that never tires in proclaiming the gospel of love and mercy. It is a theology that leads the church to always go forth, go forth, constantly finding opportunities to serve. Instead of being preoccupied with preserving itself in its past glories, it is a theology of discernment that inspires us to be compassionate, to be welcoming, to be always in dialogue with society, cultures, and religions, shunning isolationism so that together we may realize the peaceful coexistence of individuals and of peoples. As I begin, my mission as president of LST, I ask for your prayers, not just for myself, but for all of us here at LST, faculty, administrators, staff, and students. We need your prayers as we set out about this journey of renewal to which Pope Francis beckons us. Before I conclude, I'd like to express LST's deep gratitude to the many bishops of the Philippines and Asia, to superiors of religious congregations and administrative superiors of our lay students for their trust, for their confidence in LST and in the Society of Jesus, in sending their men and women to study with us. Thanks to those who worked very hard to prepare for this occasion. The LST Student Council, led by our president, Mix Ramirez. To the LST Choir with Father Arnell and Genesis Toledo. The altar servers, led by Francis Lahola and Aaron Alamalai. The entire LST staff, Glenn Gonzalez and our maintenance man, whose men who set up the oratory together with the staff of Loyola House of Studies. Thank you, David, Zilanestor, William, Jaime. Thank you so much. Finally, may I ask Father Joe Kilong Kilong to please stand. Thank you, Father Joe Kilong Kilong, for the past... For the past six years of exemplary service that you have rendered to LST, you have left an indelible mark in LST and your contribution will always be remembered. Salamat. Thanks to all.